Today, we'll talk about which are the five best picks, how to choose the correct product, and what you should look at before buying. We've ranked these products based on their price, quality, durability, performance, and more. If you'd like to see their price and find out more information, you can check out the links in the description down below. Let's get started. We are going to start this list with the best budget option that you can get your hands on. Number five, Moto G7 Play. It may be the cheapest and smallest member of the G7 family, but the Moto G7 Play is also the biggest bargain. Just like the Moto G7 and the Moto G7 Power, the Moto G7 Play not only has to beat out its relatives to secure your affection, it has to fend off serious budget competition from Nokia and Honor, and it does. It's the smallest of the G7 phones and I like that. It's comfortable and easy to manage with just one hand, the plastic finish is warm to the touch, and the textured back adds some grip. You'll find the same signature round camera module protruding on the back with a classic M logo below, marking out the fingerprint sensor. There's a 5.7-inch LCD screen on the front with a large notch at the top, with an earpiece flanked by the camera lens and flash. There's a large bezel at the bottom bearing the Motorola brand, which makes you wonder about the need for a notch. There are also fairly thick bezels around the sides of the screen. The screen on the G7 Play gets plenty bright. Colors are a bit oversaturated out of the box, but you can tweak them in the display settings. The best thing about the Moto G7 Play is that it has exactly the same processor as the Moto G7, which costs $100 more. That means performance is broadly comparable. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 632 chip is much more capable than most of the MediaTek processors you tend to find in devices at this price. The Moto G7 Play comes equipped with a 13 megapixel camera with an f2.0 aperture. It's capable of capturing good shots in ideal lighting conditions. The level of detail is fairly good and the colors are vibrant. With the same 3000 mAh battery as the Moto G7, but with a smaller screen to power, I had high hopes for the battery life of the G7 Play and wasn't disappointed. The G7 Play got me through most days with plenty left in the tank. The Moto G7 Play lacks the glamour of the Moto G7 and can't go for quite as long as the G7 Power, but it's decently cheaper than both. You're getting the best bang for your buck in terms of performance, battery life and camera. Next up, we have a model which gives you the best value for your money. Number 4. Google Pixel 3 This one is one of the best budget phones on the market today. It has an excellent battery life, amazing build quality, and many more features that make this budget phone look and feel like a top-notch premium phone. Google Pixel 3a has a very nice-looking design. It's pretty light, measuring at 6 by 2.8 by 0.3 inches and weighing just 3.2 ounces. It's entirely made out of plastic, but it still looks great. It has AGC's Dragon Tail Strength and Glass, which is not as great as the Corning's Gorilla Glass, but it's not bad. It has a USB Type-C port on the bottom and a headphone jack on the back. On the right side, it has the volume rocker buttons and the power button. It has a pretty nice OLED display with a 2220 by 1080p resolution. The screen looks great and delivers great color accuracy. It has a Snapdragon 670 processor, 4GB of RAM and 64GB of internal storage. It performs well and can complete everyday tasks without a problem. It has a single rear camera at 12.2 megapixels with an f1.8 aperture. Even though it doesn't sound like a top-notch camera at only 12 megapixels, it can take some amazing pictures, and this camera is compared to other top-notch camera phones like the S10. The portrait mode is on another level on this one. It delivers so much detail, and it feels like the picture was taken with a photo shooting camera. On the front, it has an 8 megapixel camera that can take great selfies. It has a 3000 mAh battery, which is small, but it can last all day long. Overall, it's a phone that has so many great features and specs. It doesn't cost much, and it's one of the best budget phones in the market today. If you've already decided to buy a budget phone that has a lot to offer, you should consider taking a look at this one too. If you're looking for a mid-range model, then this next pick is a great option. Number 3. Apple iPhone SE 2020 The new iPhone SE is an outstanding phone, delivering fast performance and very good cameras in a compact design. I generally like the iPhone SE's design, with one exception. On the plus side, it's a very well-made handset with the same sturdy glass and aluminium design as the iPhone 8. There are three color options for the iPhone SE, black, white, and product red. 
I like how the aluminium band is colour matched with the back of the device. Another plus to the iPhone SE, the whole design is almost comically compact compared to the iPhone 11 Pro Max. It's the difference between barely noticing a phone is in the front pocket and having it bulge out. The iPhone SE measures 5.45 by 2.65 by 0.29 inches and weighs 5.22 ounces, which is smaller and narrower than the Google Pixel 3a but about the same weight. The Pixel 3a has a bigger 5.6 inch display but a cheaper plastic design. A 4.7 inch screen on a modern day phone may seem antiquated, but those shopping for one of the best small phones won't be disappointed in this panel. Just don't expect a full HD picture. The iPhone SE's display resolution is just 1334 by 750 pixels. We would prefer to see a 1080p display, but it's not too bad of a trade off. Like the iPhone 8, the iPhone SE features a single 12 megapixel rear camera and a 7 megapixel front camera. You don't get an ultra wide angle lens like the iPhone 11 or a telephoto lens with optical zoom like the iPhone 11 Pro, but the A13 Bionic chip boosts the camera's performance of the iPhone SE in several ways. While Android phone makers outfit their budget phones with weaker processors, the iPhone SE packs the same state of the art A13 Bionic chip as the iPhone 11 and iPhone 11 Pro. This means you'll enjoy the same fast and responsive performance. The iPhone SE is rated for less battery life than the iPhone 11, so you shouldn't expect the longest endurance. For instance, Apple says the iPhone SE delivers 13 hours of video playback versus 17 hours for the iPhone 11. The iPhone SE 2020 is the affordable phone to beat and one of the best cheap phones you can get. Before we talk about the best model overall, let's look at the runner-up for this list. Number 2. Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact Sony has crammed a dump truck load of hot tech into the Xperia XZ2 Compact. You can tell too as it certainly has chunk and thickness, 12.1mm. With its full fat feature set and hardware bulging out its brushed metal and plastic casing, it delivers a spec that outguns the Samsung Galaxy S9, a design that banishes the blocky bezel-tastic pass still in play as late as last year's Xperia's XZ Premium and a selection of features including another impressive world first that allows it to take on camera powerhouses like the Huawei P20 Pro too. Simply put, it's a quality all-round small phone. Most phone makers try to make their handsets as thin as they can. The design goal of the Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact is not about thinness. The small footprint is at least 50% of the appeal here. The Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact has the silhouette of a phone with a 4.5-inch screen. Its actual display measures 5 inches across, but this is only because it has a longer 18-9 aspect display like so many recent phones. The Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact's design is different to the Xperia XZ1 Compact though. It's no longer a rectangular brick using much smoother curves across its back for a palm-hugging feel. That phone has a 1020p resolution. This is a wide Full HD screen with a resolution of 1080x2160. It's very sharp with density of 483 pixels per inch. The Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact shares many features with the larger, more expensive Xperia XZ2. It's what makes this small phone so unusual. These features include Qualcomm's top-end Snapdragon 845 chipset, a 19-megapixel camera, 64 gigabytes of storage, and a screen capable of playing HDR video. Down at pixel level, the Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact's images still look obviously processed, with a clear attempt to bring out fine detail like the throwaway branches of a tree. The Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact has a 2870mAh battery, just a little larger than the 2700mAh battery of the XZ1 Compact. The Sony Xperia XZ2 Compact is a solid step forward from the XZ1 Compact in several respects. It has more storage, a higher screen resolution, and some camera improvements. Finally, the next model is the best overall. From us, it gets a perfect score in all categories. Number 1. Samsung Galaxy S10e Samsung Galaxy S10e with E standing for essential, Samsung has produced a pretty amazing new phone that's at a lower price than S10 and S10 Plus, but also has nearly all the features that they have. Yes, maybe you won't get the third lens and the gorgeous curved display edges and the in-screen fingerprint sensor, but with the value that this product offers, it's easy to see Samsung's strategy. 
The Samsung Galaxy S10e is slightly different from the Galaxy S10 series, while the Galaxy S10 and S10 Plus have a flashier look. The S10e has a hip look, keeping the cool look without going over the top. The 5.8-inch dynamic AMOLED display is astounding. It has large amounts of brightness, making it easy to use outdoors. It has a full HD+, which is not as pixel-dense as the Quad HD+, but can hold itself pretty well. The front camera is placed inside the screen, which is a good design choice. The Galaxy S10e is armed with Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 SoC with 6GB of RAM. In the Geekbench 4, which tests the overall performance, it has scored 10,413 points, coming in second just to the Galaxy S10+. Plus. While gaming, it really shines. In high-performance demanding games, even with maxed-out settings, it won't break a sweat, and the frame rate won't take a dip. The Galaxy S10e has a 3100 mAh battery, which is larger than the Galaxy S9's battery, but the Galaxy S10e is also a smaller phone. However, in various tests, the battery life is the same as the S9. But it's pretty decent battery life nonetheless. It also has the wireless PowerShare feature, which allows you to transform your phone into a charging pad. It's the best phone at that price you can buy, providing great value without the compromise of performance and features of the series. If you want a top-notch small phone, you should definitely consider this one. Buying Guide Firstly, the display. If you're like most of us, you're going to spend hours each day staring at your smartphone screen. Make sure you're buying one that's bright enough to see outdoors and sharp enough where text doesn't look blurry while you're surfing the web. If you're buying a phone with a large screen, don't go under a resolution of 1920x1080p, and if you can splurge, look for the sharper 2560x1440 Quad HD resolutions. Consider the screen size too. Secondly, storage. I know plenty of folks try to save money by buying cheaper phones, but often they ship without much storage on board. I recommend getting a smartphone with at least 64GB of storage, or more if you plan to download music and movies. Apps are much bigger these days, and pictures can take a lot of space if you're not storing them in the cloud. Apple Photos, Google Photos, or other services offer these options. Some Android smartphones also offer micro SD card slots that allow you to boost the storage space. And thirdly, camera. If you like sharing pictures with friends and family, make sure you're buying a phone with a good camera. Most of the more expensive phones, the Galaxy S9 and the iPhone X, are particularly adept at taking photos in low light too, which means you'll still get good pictures in a dim restaurant without the flash. Budget phones don't usually have great cameras, so consider spending a bit more if this is important to you. Thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. If you found it helpful, please remember to leave a like and subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this in the future. If you have any questions related to these products, you can leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can.